you tapping in real quick for this ufc 306 highly anticipated bantamweight matchup with a bantamweight strap is very much up for grabs between sugar sean o'malley and marab the machine dwash Vili, taking place in the sphere noche ufc 2024 is finally fucking here only a few hours left man all questions will be answered you understand what i'm saying to you Dogs will bark. It's just about have we or have you decided, you know, with the right dogs to do so. You know what I mean? It's only 10 fights. I, for one, don't believe it's going to be a clean sweep as far as, uh, you know, the individuals representing the Mexican flag are concerned. But it may very well be so. That is to be determined. You know what I mean? In my personal opinion, there are a lot of what if situations to consider. You know what I mean? Yasmin, what if Catelyn Souza shows up, shows out, shows off, and starches her inside the distance viciously to secure the victory via KO, TKO? This is not a young woman who in Yasmin, who has not been finished via KO, TKO inside the distance already by lesser opposition in my personal opinion. So what if, man? You know what I'm talking about? Very much so why uh, women's MMA should not be locked up in your main plays, main bets, main parlays. You know what I'm talking about? Because what the fuck if, man? You know what I mean? What if? Catelyn Souza just fucks everybody's shit up as the second big, biggest underdog on the court by uh, just completely starching Yasmin to get her out of there inside the distance in vicious fashion. What if? You know what I mean? What if Raul Roses Jr. is not able to get his game going, much like he wasn't able to get it going against Christian Rodriguez? And we all saw how that ended for him. And in my personal opinion, Christian Rodriguez is not a high level of opposition. He was just an individual who looked very good against other prospects. A prospect who looked very good against other prospects until they gave him that next step up in Julian Rosa. And we very quickly found out where his ceiling was inside the UFC. Raul Rosa couldn't do anything with Christian Rodriguez inside of 15 minutes. He couldn't absolutely nothing. He produced a horrible body of work. While Christian Rodriguez just did what he did and, uh, you know, maintained victorious amongst the other prospects. But as I said, Julian Rosa got him out of there with quickness. Yeah, I'm talking about it, it, it took Julian Rosa no time and no problems to get uh, Christian Rodriguez out of there inside the distance via submission. Yeah, I'm talking about like that. So that showed us where Christian's ceiling is inside the UFC. And Christian is the one individual that Raul Roses has had trouble with inside the UFC. That's the only reason I talk about that. Arichi Lang, he has been submitted in, you know, in his career. He's been finished in his career. But he's no chump stop. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of individuals thought Johnny Munoz Jr. was going to come in there and ragdoll him around and get him to the ground and just... You know, find a submission, sink it in, lock it up, and get him out of there inside a distance. Along, you know, as along with quite a few other individuals in Orichi Lang's career, that motherfuckers thought was just gonna have their way with him. He's very solid. He's very well rounded. You know what I'm talking about? And in my personal opinion, he may very well be very capable of keeping this fight on the feet. And if that is the case, he will outstrike Raul Roses by a significant number. In my personal opinion, and undoubtedly and undeniably to the judges and the crowd produced a better all-around body of work on the feet in the striking department if he manages to keep this fight upright you know what i'm talking about and raul roses is you know minus 1000 in some places right now this is another prospect who's looked good against other prospects until he didn't and got taken out by the prospect killer who in his own right reached his ceiling inside the UFC with Julian Arosa. It's just so many reasons why uh, you need to tread lightly on this motherfucking fight, man. You know what I mean? And I know me. I had Raul Roses wrapped up in my foundation for a whole shitload of my poor legs, man. 
That's why I'm sitting in the casino parking lot right now. Yeah, I'm talking about when I wrap up this video, I'm going in and, uh, you know, I have a couple parlays that don't have round roses in them. You know what I mean? But I'm just going to go put a few more in that just don't have that fight involved at all. And maybe one or two that have uh, a Richie Lang as a dog. Just because. You know what I'm talking about, man? What if, real quick, what if Esteban Ribibix shows up, shows out, and uh, shows off in his own right and is able to match the volume of Daniel Zell Huber in the striking department or even possibly slightly edge him out in the volume department while also mixing in and securing takedowns over the course of 15 minutes to slightly produce the all-around better, you know, the better all-around body of work over the course of 15 minutes, much like Trey Ogden did to uh, get the nod via decision, man. You know what I mean? What if, man? What if Esteban comes in there and, you know, he, uh, you know, the physical attribute that he's at, you know, where he's at a disadvantage, the height and the reach, if he uses, you know, those to his advantage and shoots underneath Daniel Zell Huber's one, two, and uh, secures a power double more than once in his takedown, racks up some control time, some ground and pound, possibly puts Daniel Zellhuber in a compromisable position down there or busts him open with an elbow. Daniel Zellhuber makes his way back up to the feet. It's competitive. He's using his reach, but then he slips up underneath that reach and, you know what I mean, uses the height advantage very much to his disadvantage by, you know what I mean, getting low on them motherfucking hips locking them motherfucking hands and securing that motherfucking double, just scooping him up and dropping him on his booty while Daniel Zellhuber's leaning over because he's longer, he's lankier, he's taller, you know what I'm talking about? There's very much a way that Esteban Ribovic can use those physical attributes that he's at a disadvantage, you know, to, to his advantage and make those advantages very much a disadvantage to Daniel Zellhuber in the uh, wrestling and the grappling department, you know what I'm talking about? But um, it is what it is. It very much is just a whole bunch of what ifs and me on my bullshit as I sit in this parking lot, man, and politic my next parlay move. You know what I'm talking about? What if, man? You know what I'm saying? What if Valentina Shevchenko shows up, shows out, and shows the fuck off and reminds motherfuckers, you know what I'm talking about, that uh, I was champ for a reason and that last motherfucking fight, you know, was hella close and you damn sure could have made an argument that it should have went my motherfucking way, but, you know, she was the champ. They gave her the nod, you know what I mean? But this is UFC Noche. This is Noche UFC 2024. We're not in Mexico City or anywhere like that. We're in Las Vegas in the sphere, and I very much do believe so. If she even makes her body of work look like it did in the last match, she could get the nod, meaning um, Alexa won the first one via submission. By hopping on that back, the second one was a draw. The third one goes to uh, Valentina via decision, whether it's a split, unanimous, or a majority. She gets the belt, and then they're set up for a fourth match, you know what I mean? Which is technically like their rubber match because there's a draw up in there, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck if, man? Because you can't deny that the last matchup, while Alexa slightly outstruck her, you know what I mean? In the um, strike department, Valentina's 199 strikes landed out of whatever was done so at a slightly better percentage. She threw less, you know what I mean? She threw less but landed more in, the, in the, within the less that she threw. Like, she threw at a better percentage. And I believe she, her significant strikes were more than Alexa's significant strikes, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, they were also at a better percentage. And her four out of six takedowns or whatever it was, what is it, was at a better percentage you know what i'm talking about so if she produces that same body of work against alexa this go around she may very well get denied in her own right setting it up for the fourth fight alexa might need to finish this one via ko tko or via submission again inside the distance if she doesn't valentina shevchenko might be a bit more vicious while also a bit more technical and a bit more you know smothering when uh she moves in for her you know, grappling and uh, wrestling sequences as she did, you know, shoot for more and secure more in the uh, other matchups. And I believe she'll be doing the same in this one, man. So what if, man? Because just about everybody's 
written her the fuck off. You know what I'm talking about? And what if Diego Lopez comes in here and uh, proves that um, durability has an expiration date and you cannot just hang around taking damage until you find an opening and then get the finish. You know what I'm talking about? That shit has an expiration date on it, man. You cannot keep banking on an individual that uh, is pretty much losing most of his matchups until he's not to continue to do so. Durability does have an expiration date. What if Diego Lopez comes in here and proves that via a vicious KO, TKO, you know, in a striking sequence? You know what I mean? Just a nasty little combination that just brutally puts uh, Brian Ortega completely the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? What if, man? What if Murad Guajvili comes in here and uh, stay safe? What if he gets cracked a couple times like he said he wants to get cracked and just proves to us again that his durability is, you know, definitely still intact and he uh, goes for another like 15 out of 49 takedowns like he did on Peter Young because, you know, Sean being a little bit longer and a little bit lankier, those takedowns were a little bit harder, in my personal opinion, for him to get on a Henry Cejudo based off of their frames and the wrestling and grappling abilities of Henry Cejudo and also on Peter Yawn based off the frames of the two individuals. I believe they'll be a bit easier for him to get on uh, Sean O'Malley based off of his physical frame. You know what I'm talking about? Much like I said about Esteban Ribovics and Daniel Zellhuber, if he chooses to take that route, we know Marab's going to take that route. You understand what I'm saying to you? And what if it goes 25 minutes, man? Because Marab's not much of a finisher. But what if it goes 25 minutes and he puts up another almost 300 motherfucking strikes over the course of 25 minutes while holding, you know, Sean O'Malley to like 100 or 100 and something strikes and also goes something crazy like 16 out of 52 on takedowns, man. Like, what if he just puts up more takedowns than he did up against Pierre Rion? Or if he doesn't have to put up more because he just secures, secures quite a few more. He doesn't have to attempt so many because he secures quite a few more and is able to do with him a little bit more than he was able to do with him prior. You know what I'm talking about? What if, man? It's a whole lot of what ifs on this card. What if O'Day Osborne comes in here and disconnects Ronaldo from his consciousness inside the first 30 seconds like he did Jerome Rivera? You know what I'm talking about? Or just this clips him and disconnects him inside his consciousness somewhere inside the distance like he has done to multiple other individuals in his career, man. He's very fucking dangerous and he does possess a significant reach advantage on the feet in the striking department, man. And if Ronaldo wants to come in there, you know, heavy, hot, you know what I mean? Aggressively searching for that finish, trying to clip and disconnect Ode Osborne from his motherfucking consciousness, man, and just flatline him in that octagon, man. It could look very much like it did when, you know, Jerome Vera came in there with the same intentions, man. O'Day just used that reach, just, just swatting at his hands, swatting at his hands, and bow, he finds the opening, you know what I mean? John Jones-esque, you know what I mean? Like real, real John Jones-esque type shit because of the reach advantage that he, uh, he uh, 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 possesses in this motherfucking um, weight class. That's what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Like how John Jones, he put that long ass, put them hands out there and he just fuck with people. You know what I'm talking about? Like in wrestling, you want to mush a motherfucker's face, throw their hands down. O'Day does that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how it's going to play out. Maybe Ronaldo sneaks something in there and gets him out of there whopping. Makes me wrong and everybody else right. Or what if O'Day gets it done? tonight you know what i'm talking about in my personal opinion there's a whole lot of what ifs that could fucking happen today man and there's only 10 fucking fights what if Edgar Suarez uses his reach advantage that he possesses which is a significant one the matchup with joshua van and uh just keeps him on the end of his punches much like charles uh johnson then john johnson did and gets him out of there inside a distance via ko tko you know what i'm talking about or catches joshua van coming in for a takedown because Joshua Van doesn't like how it's going on the feet and sinks up a motherfucking front choke or a guillotine and pulls guard and gets him out of there inside the distance via submission because Josh is lost via submission and uh, via KO, TKO being, you know, clipped and disconnected inside his motherfucking inside the distance. So it could go either way, in my personal opinion. Joshua could come in here. He could, uh, you know, be superior in the volume department if he's able to find his groove and 
find his reach because he's, I believe, at like a six and a half inch reach disadvantage. So he very much does have to find his way, you know what I mean, through that uh, range to work that body and work that chin and get to those motherfucking takedowns and just stay safe in the process, man. And maybe he does it. Maybe he does it and just, you know, gets it done by unanimous decision or possibly gets Eggert out of there inside the distance. But what the fuck if, man? What if Eggert handles his business? You know what I'm saying? It's a whole lot of what ifs, man. Pretty much the whole fucking core, for real, for real, man. Rob and Sean, Valentina and, and motherfucking um, Alexa. Bro, oh, I seen a couple motherfucking dogs running loose over there, man. One of them was a husky. I had to make the fuck is going on. I don't, I don't live but a motherfucker hop, skipping a jump from the casino. You know what I'm talking about? They over there with a couple other dogs, though, and they folks, man. You know what I'm talking about? But, um, yeah. Brian and Diego. You know what I mean? If Brian comes in there and gets it done, ain't nobody. It's not a what-if situation, man. But if Diego comes in there and gets him out of there inside the distance, you know what I mean? Especially via submission, what if, man? You know what I mean? Old Day and, and, and Ronaldo. The same can be said, man. Daniel and Esteban. You feel me? Norma and Irene, man. What if Norma comes in there like I think she's going to come in there. Like she did against Jermaine Duran to me. Another individual she didn't want to spend time on the feet with. And what if she just secures another six take takedowns. Like Amanda Nunes did. And I know that was the double champ. But so did Holly Holmes. Who's also a former champ. But also not necessarily the strongest in the wrestling or grappling department. And she uh, used being able to secure five takedowns over the course of you know, time spent in the octagon with Irene in their matchup to secure her victory. You know what I'm talking about via decision, man. And um, I said it before, Norma's ramped up the wrestling and grappling, man. She secured one against, uh, uh, damn, the one chick that she fought before Chandler. Then she secured, secured three on Chandler and then six on Jermaine because she didn't want to spend a lot of time on the feet in the striking department at range with Jermaine. And I feel like that's how it's going to be with Irene. She's going to want to get her down. You know what I mean? Early and often. And her top pressure is uh, legitimate, man. So what if Norma just comes out there and undeniably gets it done via unanimous decision? Possibly three rounds and none from just locking up and securing takedowns in every single motherfucking round and producing a better all-around body of work to get it done in a boring fight. But what the fuck if, man? You know what I mean? It's a whole lot of that shit on this card. I'm going to go ahead and get the fuck up out of here. I don't went hard on the what ifs. You know what I mean? But uh, that's how I get when uh, I'm out this motherfucker politicking. My final uh, parlay mission. You know what I'm talking about? And that's what's fitting to happen. I'm fitting to go in here, make a couple MLB plays, a couple college football plays, a couple NFL plays, and then uh, get to these MMA parlays, man. And, uh, you know do my absolute best as to make sure I secure this bag in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Best of luck to all y'all with all of y'all bets, all y'all parlays, single plays, dog plays, everything y'all got going on, man. Best of luck. Whether you on the same side as I'm on or you on the other side, man. You know what I'm talking about? Swap out options are mandatory. In these matchups, in my personal opinion, you find who you're confident in. And then all those other ones that you have question marks on, you just uh, add swap out options. And if you're not highly confident in anybody, understandably so, it's a 10 fight card. No need to go hard. No need to stress yourself out. You can sit back and just take take a little yard man take a little unit little hundred dollars or something you know what i mean and, and find like four legs you like throw forty dollars on you know what i mean five legs you like throw 25 dollars on them you know what i'm talking about and then take your little take your little last little 35 dollars and just throw a whole bunch of little you know what i mean what if sin or something some old long leggers you know what i mean your little six seven eight and just throw five dollars on like don't go crazy on this cord man you know what i mean we got a cord coming up and 
another one coming up after that it's going to be real good for the betting so it's really no need to go crazy on this card it's a one-time thing in this fear you feel what i'm saying to you don't go too hard man and find yourself on the wrong side of a lot of these motherfucking matchups and be mad because in my personal opinion a lot of these motherfucking matchups can go any which way i've just chose the side with the uh ones I'm on, and oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about, what if uh, Manuel Torres comes in there and gets Ignacio out of there inside the distance, man, you know what I mean, I know a lot of motherfuckers feel like it might go the other way, and understandably so, I completely get it, you know what I mean, it's gonna be highly competitive, I do feel like the one, the more dangerous individual out of the two is Manuel Torres, I could be completely wrong, you know what I'm talking about? Ignacio Bahamundos could prove to be the more dangerous one out of those two individuals. You feel me? That is to be, to, to be determined. Very much prospect versus prospect. Like, it's a whole heavy favorites with Yasmin and Raul, man. You just have to remember it's prospects versus prospects. And prospects getting price tags that we haven't necessarily even given to some of the GOATs in these divisions ever. But we're giving them the prospects who've looked good against other prospects. And in some cases, prospects who uh, have been, you know, taken out by other prospects. Very much the situation in both the heavy favorites. Raul Rosa was taken out by Christian Rodriguez, who's very much a prospect. Who looked good amongst other prospects until he didn't. You know what I'm talking about? Up when he took that next step up with Julian. And then Yasmin. She was knocked, deep, knocked out by Denise Gomez, who, in my personal opinion, is a lower level of opposition than that of uh, Catlin Souza. You know what I mean? But again, that's just me. That's just my personal opinion. But uh, both of these heavy favorites, the heaviest favorites on the court, are prospects who have looked good against other prospects and also taken their losses that are on their record to other prospects. So, uh, gotta tread lightly, man. Try not to overly invest in prospects. You know what I'm talking about? Gotta let these individuals face a higher level of opposition so we can see what her ceiling is. Like Christian, Raul Roses couldn't get it done against him. Christian moved on. He had to fight Julian Rosa. Julian Rosa got him out of there with quickness. We saw very quick where. Christian Rodriguez's ceiling is. You know what I'm talking about? And the boy doesn't even know how to make weight down where he belongs at anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, man. Very much so. Gonna be a good card though. Gonna be a good gonna be a good goddamn day, man. You know what I'm talking about? We got the uh UFC 306, highly anticipated bantamweight matchup with a bantamweight strap. Is very much up for grabs between Sugar Sean O'Malley and Marab the Machine Dwajvili taking place in the sphere. Noche UFC 2024 is finally fucking here, man. A few hours away, all questions get answered. The uh, Hispanic parades fitting to pop off around here. It's gonna be a good fucking day, man. It's gonna be a good fucking day. Best of luck. Appreciate y'all for tapping in.